Hello everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of CamLogic's Tech Tuesday. My name is Rob Carver and I'm an application engineer at CamLogic. Tech Tuesday is our free weekly 30-minute tips and tricks webinar and today's topic is PMI application for CAM use with NX 8.5. But first let's familiarize everyone with CamLogic. CamLogic has been in the CAD CAM CAE space for over 35 years. The company was established 16 years ago, initially focused on CAM, servicing mainly the tool and die shops in the area. As the market has evolved, CAM logic has evolved. Interestingly, working our way backward from manufacturing to the conception of the idea or design. Because we started toward the end of the process and worked our way to the beginning, CAM logic has the fundamental knowledge of what has to be done to assure that each step of the process will result in a product that will actually work or fit into the next phase of development. CamLogic has chosen to represent software and tools that enable our customers to fulfill the full cycle of product development. And we consider ourselves integrators and partners for our customers, not just resellers. CamLogic employs a three-legged stool strategy. We partner with Siemens, offering the complete integrated Siemens portfolio for design, machining analysis, and data storage and retrieval. We partner with 3D systems for 3D printing and rapid prototyping, and Steinbeckler white light scanners in Creoform for 3D scanning for inspection and quality. Now that you've heard a bit about CAM logic, let's move on to today's topic, PMI for CAM application. As discussed last time, feature in feature-based machining, uh, it's an ideal for making programs automatically, reusing machining knowledge previously used to machine such features and other parts. Uh, and PMI augments that functionality. Uh, I think last time, uh, if you recall last month, I talked about feature-based machining and how uh, feature-based machining can find uh, PMI data or product manufacturing information resident in the model and then utilize that PMI in the knowledge rules to determine how to machine the part and create operations. Feature-based machining is ideal for making programs automatically um, and PMI uh, and reuse the machining knowledge and PMI to make the programmer's job easier and more efficient. But how does PMI get into the part initially? Well, ideally the designer would put the PMI in the model. Uh, you know, who would know better than uh, what the design intent is? Um, the designer uh, would have to put the manufacturing information into the drawing anyway, so why not use the PMI and then import it in the drawing, but very often that's not what happens. Uh, to someone versed in NX, the interface for PMI will look uh, pretty much the same as the drafting, uh, as the drafting interface in symbols. Uh, you've probably heard these complaints before or even used them, so the, uh, used them yourself. Uh, we don't have time. Um, I'm not going to do it if my customer didn't use it. It takes too much time. Uh, you know, why should I use it? I have a drawing, but it, my I can't get my design department to use it. It's it's confusing. It. You know, I've heard these I've heard these complaints, uh, and even when I worked in industry myself, um, you know, and it was a major corporation. They don't they didn't use PMI for whatever reason. It it, it just it kind of you know, baffles the mind sometimes. But the real question should be, how much time will I save downstream if I take the time to use PMI now? The designer should use it, yes. However, he or she doesn't have to be the one to do so. If the CAM department uses feature-based machining, you saw how PMI can benefit, uh, be of a benefit there. How much time does your CAM programmer waste just looking for information on a drawing for the model he's working with? With PMI, the models, the information's in the model. You don't need to look anywhere else. Um, if you use NX uh, to program your CMM, coordinate measure machines, PMI will set up most of the programming for you. So the CAM programmer and the CMM programmer can, can apply the PMI as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be the designer that does so. The point is, uh, by doing so, uh, by the, having the designer be the one to apply it, the downstream process will save time uh, by already having it in place. 
Um, it doesn't really take that much time to apply the notes uh, or critical information. So with that, uh, let me start my demo. Um, you know, initially this part, this demo is not going to really look much like a cam, a cam demo. We're not really going to be machining any parts or anything, but it is. It's 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 uh, just illustrating how simple it is to put PMI in the part. Uh, and this part is just something I worked up for for that purpose. So I, again, I like using uh, the full screen mode. Uh, you have the option. You can use a uh, you can use you know the traditional uh, menus. Uh, I do a lot of my work on a laptop, and I've, I've kind of gotten used to the full screen mode where my buttons are in that regard, so I'm going to go back to it. Um, PMI, when you're in full screen mode, PMI is right up here on the main toolbar. Uh, I'm in, at this point, I'm in modeling. I'm not in CAM, but, uh, but PMI still shows up in the CAM side. And PMI is a uh, view-based uh, function, kind of like the views of a drawing. So what you would want to do uh, is if you go to your part navigator, you see that you have your model views. Uh, you also have, uh, we don't have it yet because there's no PMI associated in this drawing, but you'll have a PMI node on here once we start putting it on. And uh, it'll show up in those two places. Okay. So, just for just to get started here, um, let me make uh, all my top views are already my work view. So, if I wanted to make a, if I wanted to change between views, uh, I kind of got hung up a little bit. Uh, here's my here's my front view is my work view. Right click on it, make my top view my my uh, work view. Okay. So let's start out. Um, let's do a, let's do an inferred dimension. And again, if you're familiar with the uh, design uh, drafting interface, this this should look somewhat familiar. Okay. So here's this hole here. Eight, but the, one of the differences would be is we'd go in and also include we'd associate both these features in that PMI. Okay. So now they're both under PMI, they're both referenced uh, with this with this one dimension. And we can go in, we can uh, you know make it a box dimension or we can give it a size tolerance. Um, plus or minus one. Oop, there it's hidden by my there it is. Uh, point one. Maybe we want to make that uh, plus or plus. Uh, let's make it. A, let's make it a tight one. Let's uh, go to five. Given it's a metric part, so there we have that. If we want to go back in, um, okay, we'll cancel that. If we want to go back in and edit that. We can add GD and T references. True position. Uh, point one. Maximum material condition. A, B, and C. Okay. So you can see that it's it's not it's not that difficult to add to add the PMI. Let's let's add a uh, let's add a couple of drafting references, uh, data and features. Um, I want. Uh, let's go to my. Uh, let's go to my uh, first. Change my my work view, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna make my bottom that bottom uh, surface my. Reference dimension. So, select my associated object. Select my terminator. All right. 
Let's uh, let's add another one. Let's go to the top view again. In this case, we're going to put in our B reference and select that surface there. Oop. Do that again. terminating object. There we go. Yeah, it seems how we're in the top view. Let's go ahead and put that uh, There we go. Magic mouse clicks. Okay. So as you can see, it's 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 you know fairly easy to put that put that in. Um, if you wanted to put in a uh, a note, uh, let's see, you can put in uh, in our draft drop down here. We can put in you can put in balloon uh, balloon notes, uh, just general notes. Let's say uh, maybe I want to uh, put in a note about these tapped holes here. So I know they're M6. Six by one. Four places. Okay, now if you're using feature-based machining, on uh, you know this might be this might be just a uh, just a note for your programmer. Okay, if you're going if uh, if you're going to use feature-based machining because these are symbolic threads, feature-based machining really doesn't need this PMI. Uh, it's it, the the feature-based machining is going to recognize what size what kind of hole, what size of hole. And it'll pick the appropriate tools out of, out of the tool library. So this might just be used as a as a uh, general note for your for your programmer um, or for your CMM operator. Um, however, it doesn't mean that you can't add um, true position tolerances, just like I did up here. You could add true position tolerances to this. Okay, um, it, it's it's. You know, the, the the they're just the PMI is just extremely useful. You know, I don't have to if I put it in for my programmer, uh, my CMM, my CAM programmer, as a designer. Now he's not wasting time looking for information that is readily available uh, to him right here in the model. Uh, let's you know, last time we used uh, surface finish, so let's go ahead and add a surface finish uh, PMI. I think well, first I need to change to my I want to change to my uh, front view again because I want the PMI to show up in this view. So let's uh, let's add my surface finish tolerance. Maybe I want maybe I want these the surface to be a, a ground surface. Okay. So I'll place it right there, and let's select those objects. Okay. Here, here for the surface finish fields, you've got the different uh, roughness that you can put that you can put in for your surface finish, the grinding. Now, this this information, the uh, feature-based machining will utilize. Okay, as you saw that it had uh, before, it had uh, um, in the feature-based machining example, it had. Created operations, different operations, based on the fact that the surfaces that we had um, had PMI associated with it. Okay, and so there you go. Um, 
So I mean, th this this is just a, a quick little demonstration, just showing uh, showing you uh, what you can do with it. Um, if we wanted to, um, maybe uh, do a, you know, automatically do a uh, distance between some holes here. Okay, now it's showing up. It, it normally you would have it on the top view. I, uh, you know, I didn't put it. I didn't make my top view my work view. So you see how that would come in. So maybe you like that. Maybe you don't like that. It's easy enough to to uh, correct. We can cancel these. Make my top my work view again. Now I'll go back in and do the drawing. And again, you can apply uh, GD and T tolerances and, and this, this type of thing to these to these dimensions as well. Um, and I think with that, that's about what uh, what I wanted to show you. Um, so we'll continue on with our our demonstration, our uh, demo, or do a wrap up here. So the point is, it really doesn't take that much time to uh, to to do the PMI. Um, as you can see, it, it, you don't have to do a full blown drawing inside of the model. However, the the one of the advantages is any PMI that you do apply to your model you can import into your drawing. It'll transfer directly into your drawing. So your drawing's half done for you by the time you get to, to laying out your views and that sort of thing. So I mean, it, there's some definite time savings, even for the designer, to apply PMI just as he, even though he's, you know, as he's doing the, uh, the uh, design phase of his, uh, of his part. So again, you do have time. So we can't emphasize enough here at CanLogic uh, the importance of training uh, to get the most out of today's technology. And it's well documented that training helps improve the speed of use, increases the efficiency, and provides, provides for faster problem solving, and leads to fewer support calls, uh, all of which positively affect your company's productivity, uh, your return on your investment, and the bottom line. At CamLogic, we offer a wide variety of hands-on instruction-intensive courses for users at every level. Training is available at the on-site location of your choice or at one of our training labs located throughout the Midwest. And for more information or to register, you can please visit our website. And today's webinar can be found on YouTube, usually within 24 hours of broadcast. Uh, check out CamLogic on uh, YouTube for past webinars as well. And thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or call me at any time. Be sure to visit our website at www.camlogic.com. Uh, we can also be found on LinkedIn, Blogger, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This concludes today's edition of Tech Tuesday. Thanks again for tuning in, and have a great day.